Um, good day again, this is Professor Resnick. Um, today I want to uh, pick up on our discussion last time of Richard Rorty, um, and I want to talk uh, more on epistemology and how that connects uh, to Marxism, the focus of this course. First, consider Marxism as a kind of conceptual object. There are physical objects like this lectern, an automobile, and so forth, but consider a conceptual object, different adjective. Um, and the question there is, how do we figure out um, what it is? So how do we figure out this object, conceptual Marxism, that we're going to study in this particular course? And there are two traditional answers to this question within the study of epistemology. First, n notice that the conceptual object, Marxism, is assumed to be independent of us. It's out there in the uh, syllabus that I've asked you to, to uh, read. It's out there in these brief lectures that I'm presenting to you. It's there in capital, the book by Marx that we're going to read. So one answer to the question of what is conceptual, uh, what is this conceptual object, Marxism, is to read it read the stuff on the syllabus, read the book, and then via the mind, your mind, induce the truth of what it's all about. So in this approach, reading experience, the experience of reading, is the standard of truth. That's called empiricism. Okay? So the answer to the question of what is Marxism, which again is assumed to be independent of us, is experience in order to induce the truth of that conceptual object. Let me give you a different answer to the question. Uh, let me begin with an attack actually on the first answer that I just provided. <clears throat> you can read the book, you can read everything on that reading list, you can listen to these lectures and you're not going to figure it out. What you need, according to the second view, is a key set of ideas to allow you to sort through um, all those readings. The readings are going to provide you with an infinity of different facts. But in fact, the way you will sort through those to figure out what are valid, what are not, and so forth, is the, through a sorting mechanism, which is your mind. So the second way um, argues that there are certain key ideas, or, or if you want a logic of, of reasoning, which will enable you to figure out what this uh, Marxism is, is, is all about. The reason, then, reason is the standard of truth in the second way, that's rationalism. Just where the word comes from, rationalism, reason is the standard of truth in the second way. So we have two different standards of truth with which and by which we can figure out what is this conceptual object. So I want to critically examine now these two different ways um, of gaining knowledge, these two different, different epistemologies and compare and contrast them with uh, this Marxist way uh, which I said last time, this notion of dialectic materialism, dialectical materialism, or overdetermination. Suppose someone produces then a knowledge of Marxism in a book or an article or in these lectures, uh, whatever the form, it, it arrives uh, in front of you, you have a conceptual object. Um, in general, let's extend that. Someone can produce a knowledge of anything in life. Um, a knowledge of the planet Earth, a knowledge of the, of, of the stars, a knowledge of the universe, a knowledge of this lectern comprised of particles, um, a knowledge of two people uh, 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 dancing um, in a dance hall. That's not an epistemo epistemological problem. The production of knowledge is not the problem. The epistemological problem arrives when the individual or the collectivities of individuals assert that their produced uh, knowledge of Marxism or the planet Earth or whatever is the truth for all potential knowers. When that happens, with that, that, that particular moment, when, when the knower or the community of knowers asserts that that particular conceptual object is the truth for, ev for, for everyone, then by virtue of what the truth is, in terms of what we talked about before, then truth has to be independent of that particular Noah who has made that assertion, and everybody else who, who hears it, thinks about it. So the independence 
is another way of saying that that particular knowledge has a prior existence. If it's the truth, it doesn't depend upon anybody else's production of it, but it had an independent existence prior to that particular Noah or, or anybody else's uh, knowledge of it. And hence, that's what given to us means. So that crucial first step of independence, that which is given to us, can only be given if it's independent of us, is what the rationalists and the empiricists are, are doing in order to transform their particular claim about the world, or their particular truth claim, into the world itself. So, if you assert that your particular uh, knowledge of Marxism is the truth, then it can't be relative, that truth can't be relative to your production of it or anyone else. Rather, it was always out there to be discovered or revealed to you and to other people. And the question becomes, well, how, how was it discovered and how was it was revealed? Then we go back to what we said before. Rationalism discovers it via thought. The empiricist discovers it uh, via experience. So if it has a prior existence, it's the tr no, let me back up. If it's, a, if it's the truth, or claimed to be the truth, it has a prior existence, like as I said before, like a mountain or, or, or um, you know, a, a, a continent. And then the way you discover the mountain or continent, according to the rationalist, is via reason, according to the empiricist, um, according to uh, experience, the reading experience. Okay, and those are the two, two standards that these two different kinds of epistemologies have offered, have offered us. Well, what have they done? They have taken these two, although they do it in different ways, but it, they, have, they take the rationalists and the, empiric the empiricists take in common their particular ideas of the world and transform them into the world. Then they compare everybody else's thinking about the world against their particular thoughts, which they've turned into the world, to see if everybody else's ideas are correct. So they have transformed their particular theory about the world into the world, and that, that's a kind of epistemological labeling which enables their ideas about the world to become the world. So their conceptual <coughs> object, in this case Marxism, has been transformed into the true discourse, the true theory of the world, and everybody, the privileged Marxism, then all of the Marxisms are compared and contrasted against it to see if they measure up. 